and welcome back to our fourth and final installment of GMAX Bootcamp, the mostly painless way to make models for there.com. Okay, at least to get started making a model for there.com. You won't be an expert after you make this, but you should be successful. So here we go. Uh, lesson four. This is where we learn how to export the model uh, and submit your thing. Yeah, here we go. So back in GMAX, right where we left off in the end of the last lesson, uh, we are going to go to the file menu uh, and we're going to select export. Now exporting is different than when you're just saving. When you save you end up with a GMAX model. When you export we're going to export into the right format that there.com understands and that the previewer understands. Previewers won't open the models that you save in GMAX unless you can successfully export them. So in order to have this working you had to have a, a GMAX exporter installed and hopefully that's all worked and we'll find out right now. So go to the file menu and select export. Oops, sorry, got the wrong one. File menu and select export. You should see a basic save box, but at the bottom there's a pull down menu and one of those choices, if, if not the default, should be the their model exporter. It's a dot model file. By the way, dot model files, because they got kind of a weird extension, <laughs> uh, don't really email very well. And if you want to send your model file to anyone, you need to put it in a zip file first. And then it can be uncompressed on the other end. But if you try and just send it through Google Talk or an email as an attachment, it isn't going to work. Anyhow, you're also going to need to navigate to your folder. So you're probably going to need to click on desktop and and go to wherever you're saving this thing. Here's the boot camp. And we'll just name this cube uh, test um, I don't know, three or something like that. We'll just give it a name. Uh, sometimes uh, I use uh, letters in, instead of numbers on my model files and I'll use uh, numbers on the GMAX files. That way it keeps things sort of separate but uh, sometimes I don't. Anyway, uh, go ahead and click save. Uh, by the way, you might get some uh, errors here. If your uh, root node is outside of your object, you might get a bounding box error. Uh, you might also get one saying something like, hey, uh, uh, you need to weld some nodes, uh, weld some verts in the master node. That's not a big deal. It just means your master node is a little too small and it should still work. Um, by the way, if you go file and export and you do not see the their model exporter. That means most like, and once again, it is a pull down menu, so there may be other choices you have installed. I have uh, Quake 3 and Plasma, but uh, but uh, basically, uh, if you don't see this, you probably need to install the uh, previewer one more time. Uh, and if you're, well, there we go. Anyhow, so we've saved this. We're now pretty much done with this program. We'll hide this up and we'll fire up the previewer. And the previewer is actually a pretty simplistic program. Uh, under the file menu, you open a model. <laughs> okay, you go to the desktop, you go to your folder, you open up the model file, and you should be able to just grab your mouse and left click and rotate it around. It doesn't really have a texture on it right now. You might also want to change the background color. So if you go to views and background and set color, you can pick a different background color. That might be kind of easy. So let's do that. Let's go to views background, set color, and you can just pick a different color to make it a little lighter. There we go. That's a little easier to see. Let's go to the material menu, and under the material menu we should only see one material, uh, and it should have hopefully your initials or your set of uh, your marker or your name or something to, to let us know that this is indeed yours. And we'll pick that one. And there'll be a color texture. This is where you should see your texture of the box. That's where it's going to go. We'll just browse to wherever it happens to be. And by the way, uh, it, you actually have to have the, the, the JPEG or the PNG texture. Uh, once you open up something in a previewer, it creates another file. This is a .dds file, which may not show you .dds unless you have that turned on. But you'll probably see the difference being this one says JPG, and this one does not say anything after it. You probably want to open up the one that is the... Uh, it doesn't say anything after it actually. The other one's a DDS file. It says if you can see .jpg next to it, which is weird, I know. But basically, it converts your file into the format that there can display, and there uses DDS files. Once you've got your texture here in the box, remember it does need to be uh, <laughs> like 128 by 128, or 64 by 64, or 256 by 256. You know, one of those sort of basic sort of sizes to fit on a cube. Uh, and you click apply. Once again, 128 being the maximum we can use and still have it be this object. 
and you say oh also here you can also check uh, whether if you want it to glow in the dark you can uncheck this check means that it's affected by darkness actually but we set it up to do that so we say apply and we say OK now you probably do want to test to make sure it doesn't glow in the dark because that is just so darn confusing and you can go to the light menu where you can select little light and if it doesn't glow in the dark it should look basically like it's in the shadow <laughs> if it does still look exactly the same when you say the difference between much and and a little that means it's glowing in the dark and you need to go back to materials and texture and, and make sure you check that okay so now we've got it uh, except for the fact that we need to make a catalog image and making a catalog image is an art form all to itself uh, let me go back to light and set up more so it looks a little brighter you can use the uh, scroll wheel to zoom in the left mouse button to uh, uh, spit left mouse button to spin it and rotate it the right mouse button allows you to move it around and probably you want to take a screenshot of this and put it in Photoshop but there is its own built-in capture program which is probably good enough for what we're doing here for learning purposes anyway so we go to the file menu and we're gonna select snapshot and this takes a really low res JPEG by the way uh, and you just give it a name like catalog and I highly recommend that you go ahead and open that up in Photoshop and add some text and not just submit something like this because it looks gosh darn awful but we're in a hurry so under the, uh, under the file menu we're gonna go ahead and select submit to there this is the big step right here if everything works we should see a picture of the Chaz come up he's wearing his nice little world builder shirt and that nice little uh, beard of his now, that may change depending on when you're looking at this video hey things change and he's gonna guide us through the process so we click next and now at this window if there's something wrong with the texture it'll point it out right here like if one texture does not work right or is the wrong type or is not a a DDS file or not a JPEG or something it'll probably point it out to you here and you click net and then you can just go back or cancel and reset your textures and stuff so anyway let's click next and these this this next window will show you all the different ways you can sub submit this thing and it's only showing you ones you could submit it as now from this point on we really want to think about how much it's gonna cost so if you click on one of these it's suggesting cabinet config one it's a furniture builder it thinks that's going to be cheap if we click the detail button we can see the wholesale cost on this so let's click that and here's the big number first off it's going to cost me 9500 t to submit this but the wholesale fee is only 600 t that's not too bad so I could sell it for a grand to make 400 t that's not too bad but I know we could do better so let's scroll down the list a little bit here's knickknack config one let's try the details button on that all right, knickknack config one says 550. That's better. All right, but still, let's see if we can do better. Uh, knickknack config two is, I think, higher. Yeah, that's a thousand six hundred. Okay, so let's try some other things. Let's try floral builder and tree. So I've 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 gone. This this was even closed off. So I had to click the little plus next to it. Now I'm clicking tree and I'm going to click details. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the cheapest items in there. Yeah, there we go estimated wholesale fee is only 400 T that means if you could sell it for 1k you'd still be making 600 T off each one of these boxes uh, if you are interested in which ones don't work you can unclick this check mark and scroll down the list and we could take a look at uh, was it furniture builder and uh, we could look at knickknack config 3 if I can find it there's so many names on this thing knickknack config 3 details Okay, Nignag Config 3 actually is 200T wholesale. It's like the cheapest thing in game. But, uh, oh, what was the deal with this? Oh, the collision polygons. Well, if you want to cut off a couple polygons, like one polygon, you could do that. Tell you what, I'll throw that as an extra. <laughs> uh, but you can cut off one polygon, re export your model, and submit it that way. Anyhow, let's go ahead and submit it as a tree. And click next and at this screen you got to give it a clever name you know describing what it is in a name always useful you have so many characters to do this and I forget exactly how many but it'll stop you when you run out of room so let's say pirate cube pirate crate pirate crate one <laughs> okay uh, pirates are, are big uh, try and tie in with your audience what else could this be used for uh, in the description you would probably say a rather pirate looking crate 
probably filled with booty. <laughs> Beyond imagining. No, yeah, actually, you're probably going to want to put in, uh, probably want to put in a bunch of keywords like, you know, pirate, crate, box, uh, describe words that describe what this particular thing is, uh, so that it's easy to find uh, in the auctions. And then you click uh, next, and then it asks you if you want to upload your submission, and you click next one more time, and we're off and running. And it will probably take you to a web page where you have to log in. And then you will see this sort of thing. Basically, this thing here is new, and it allows you to comment. Well, it's not new. We used to be able to comment. It used to say comment to the approvers. But uh, basically, if you have something else you want to say to people, you can put it in that box. Like, I made all these textures myself. Uh, I didn't actually steal them. Or, or in this case, you could say, Francis Seven said I could use this texture on any model I wanted. It's from his GMAX boot camp class, which would probably be a very good idea. <laughs> Anyhow, anybody can feel free to use this texture, by the way. Uh, you have to make sure that it that, that it, it conforms to their product submission guidelines, uh, which are a little bit laxer now. Uh, and the big one, it does not contain any copyrighted or indecent material. Uh, real important there. Make sure that you've made your own textures and your own models and this, that, and the other. And then, and then it's going to charge you that much money. This page does not show you how much you get charged. All right. So and when you're finally done, you click submit. Off it goes. It sits and it spins and it says thank you it will tell you how much t-bucks you got left at this point and you can now go to the developer home page and you can go to my submissions and you can now go to this uh, here here's the pirate crate and you can now go to the review page for the pirate crate uh, and get a preview copy and if it's really bad there's a cancel button right here so you can cancel it if it doesn't work anyway so you click review and you know how you can do that you get a review copy of the product test it in world maybe hide those windows up you go to my things and you take out your crate and your crate will probably look a little different than mine as basically mine has that horrible base texture I let you guys borrow on it but Basically, there it is, a crate in world, and congratulations if you've got to this point where you're seeing your crate, you've successfully actually survived the GMAX boot camp. <laughs> uh, you're not an officer yet. You're just still a grunt. But anyhow, you're a grunt who can make objects and submit them in there. So thank you for taking the GMAX boot camp. Also here at the back of uh, the museum, generally speaking, if we are actually running this class, uh, you can find links to about seven other GMAX extras, which will teach you everything from more advanced texturing techniques uh, to how to do vector shading, which is one of my favorite things to do in there.com. Oh, and also more about levels of detail. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this class and will consider taking more classes at the UOT in the future. Until then, I'm your host, Francis Seven, saying, get back to modeling. We need more stuff in there.